Welcome. I am very pleased to have the opportunity once again to go through a few aspects of my work as an architectural photographer with you, because in many ways the disciplines of photographic and modeled visualized architectural representation overlap. As a part of Enscape's Envision 21 last year, I gave a talk that touched on some of the issues that I think are relevant. The gratifying response made us think further and elaborate on the four topics I touched upon. I cordially welcome you to Rendering is like photography. Applying the principles of architectural photography to your renderings. Part one of four, the eye of the photographer, what makes a good picture. My name is Arian Mifendelewski and I am an architect. During my work as a research assistant and lecturer at the Chair of Computer Added Architectural Design and the Chair of Building Technology, the focus of my activities was on the one hand on individual research projects and on the other hand on the conception and implementation of uh, teaching formats in the diploma, bachelor's and master's degree programs. My Teaching included raising awareness of team understanding and the formation of teams uh, or team structures, drawing in two and three dimensional space, the visualization of the same and uh, photographic and cinematic representation using digital techniques. Over time, I've defined architectural representation as the focal point of my part-time work as a photographer. After a fulfilling period of study and subsequent research and teaching, I decided to devote myself to photography full time with a focus on architectural documentation, whereby I keep an eye on the entire process uh, from the planners, the design and the construction documentation to the finished object and its use. In this session, I would like to make you aware of aspects of photography that you can use to enhance the quality of your architectural visualizations because one thing is quite clear rendering is like photography just because my ingredients are all organic and i use professional pots and pans for cooking and frying does not mean that my food tastes good having does not mean knowing knowing is a comprehensive knowledge and consideration to be able to convey the complexity of my thoughts when designing and of my perception when photographing. It takes more than pure technology. Technology has always been and uh, still is only a tool. How I use it, for what and to what extent is just as decisive for the visualizer as it is for the photographer, as it is for the chef, as anyone else who wants to get the best out of that product with their technology. So let's not necessarily talk about the technology, but rather about the power of the thoughts you that you put into a project and the means you have to your at your disposal to communicate those thoughts. Let's talk about the visual language, about the readability of a picture, about the, the aesthetic effect and its laws, um, about stylistic means, which uh, you in turn can use with the help of your technology to let the viewers of your work actually see what you want them to see. I would like to address the following overarching themes in this four-part webinar series. Um, the eye of the photographer, what makes a good picture, the photographer's camera and lenses, uh, technically created uh, stylistic elements, opponents and alleys, opponents can be alleys, and the fourth part will be an Enscape case study. The eye of the photographer. So let's get started with the first of uh, four sessions. Let's talk about the different aspects of image creation and why are images that we think are good actually good. And we'll talk directly about an important point, a history, a story, sorry, that is told. In the following topics, I will show again a few selected examples from my Envision session and 
uh, with further pictures, I will present the topic field extended and with uh, visualizations of some architects, I will round up the interface. Uh, when we talk about architecture and story, it does not fail to talk about the users of architecture as well. Uh, the self-evident inclusion of users has been fashionable in architectural photography for some time. Considering that in most cases, architecture would have no reason for being without use, this is a surprisingly late uh, development. In visualization, the situation is similar, although in my opinion, it was uh, common practice a little earlier. The German Sports University in Cologne was planned and realized here uh, under the canopy treated, uh, created by the uh, curve of the lower structure. There is not only access to the building, but also a meeting place for students and the parking area for vehicles. Uh, for this photo, it was important for me to document precisely this process of arriving, parking, meeting and communicating. A simple story, all I had to do was to wait until shortly before the lecture um, began. Hardly any photo I've ever taken required as much patience as this one. As this one. Um, after I had adjusted myself and my system, a certain composition of people in the foreground and a balanced load of visitors in the public pavilion in the background, some noise at the moment of my release startled the pigeons and they flew through my frame following each other. Uh, I, I was not set up for uh, fast movements but was now taken with the pigeons, uh, pigeons as um, unassuming users of this public garden. They were already users of the garden before it received a new all-influencing unit of use with the help of the archaeological pavilion. Uh, I had to wait, wait again in the hope that my uh, adjustments of the exposure time would now be sufficient. In modeling and visualization, um, you have it easier here and there than probably rather the diligence counts than the patience. On this extremely hot day, all the staff and visitors of Shanghai Expo 2010 had a very hard time. One million people visited the site in a single day, breaking the record of visitors. The UK pavilion offered a roughly circular tour. Um, on the left side in the image, you can see how visitors literally streamed in during a long exposure time. On the right side, how they streamed out again. In the middle, you can see the stuff simply reaching its limits with the sheer mass of people and enormous temperatures. The users do not necessarily have to be part of the picture. They always have an impact on the place. In this case, in the form of interventions um, that make the living space more homely, which is the benefit of architecture in this case. This photo was taken at the request of the architect. He was clear that he wanted to have it just for himself. It tells a story for those who are receptive to it, at most on constructive level. It shows how gladly he devoted himself to the grid and the design, planning and realization, a real uh, planning and um, realizing process within the framework of the renovation of the school cafeteria. Following this, he also drilled holes in the ceiling for the skylights and picked up colors and carried them into the room. Um, as architects, photographers and uh, visualizers, we understand these shots. However, with its uh, wide angle central perspective in front of a concrete column, it doesn't necessarily provide the viewer with details about the use, the necessity and thus the meaning of the space. This changes a bit when we turn our attention to one wing of the room, still hinting at the left part um, and the corridor, shortening the focal length and compressing the room a bit. We now get a more precise feeling for the room. Uh, through the columns, tables and chairs, a certain symmetry and thus an order remains. But First, it's users playing children in the courtyard on the left side and strolling children outside on the right side. 
give us a picture of the architectural location of the space. Uh, so we can say that only its users give it meaning for our consideration. Only the choice of a perspective, however, gives us the possibility to recognize further thoughts of the planner. Um, the apparently mobile um, partition walls create an open seating area on the left side, an access corridor in the center, as well as seating niches, which uh, with the help of the curtains can represent a kind of boutique. If one photographs the canteen now again with its users, one has, in my opinion, a much more exact picture of the idea of the architect up to the everyday use of the finished space. A somewhat shorter exposure time also allows me to show people, yet not explicitly, but to communicate that in this case it could be the canteen of a girls' school. So, to summarize, the more usage information you reduce your image, be it a photo or a visualization, the less communicative it becomes. In the end, what remains in this example is an empty room, which in terms of the choice of color and the cover fits in excellently with its uh, surroundings, but gives no information about the use and thus its um, reason for being. Emotions. The client to the architect. Our three boys run all day. Our property is not very large, but we really need space to run. The architect to the client. I plan your core with the kitchen, the technology, the staircase and the living room cupboard into the open plan living and dining area. Then your three boys can run in circles. Since I have two running boys myself, I appreciate more uh, not only the story of the picture, but also the emotions of the client. This is not going to go well. The little scout is about to run over the elderly gentleman on crutches. I think these examples uh, show quite well that the story and the emotions usually, but not necessarily, go hand in hand. A gentleman on crutches being knocked down by a boy scout is not the story and the emotion that one automatically locates in a train station, but people rushing to the platform, however, is. Again, the architecture, the story and emotions are told here together. The image programmed into our heads with the train station is an emotional farewell. Another narrative of the same station. The architecture is told with its recurrent patterns. The passengers walk through the picture or linger on a uh, generous uh, staircase. On the elevation, the train, the trains seem to stand. The same station, again, another story, and with it, the associated emotions. Waiting passengers who linger, talk, play, or move from one place to another. Babies, children, teenagers, mothers, fathers, grandparents, fountains, a generous staircase for access and escalators that distribute passengers in the architectural system. The same station, another story. Via the, escal via the escalators, uh, the, the passengers distribute themselves to the uh, respective platforms and into the trains. The same station, less story, less emotions, more imposing architecture. A very well done picture of one of my students with uh, whom I was on site that day. As uh, architects, we always showed up buildings with four to five elevations, followed by the sections, then the details, and finally the um, perspectives. That's how I tell the stories when I take photos too. Per Ruppenthal started one step earlier in our excursion at the surrounding plan. During our stay, he focused on the urban situation and thus the embedding of the station in the city of Liège. I spent 10 hours with the station and Per told me with 
just one picture, a story that was completely new for me. An oversized foliage, rampant, beautiful, white foreign body in a, if I may say so, quite drab and gray city. To convey these emotions, you have to tell the story differently than I did. I had to get up so early as rarely in my life to shoot photos of empty public spaces in a city with at uh, the time 20 million inhabitants. In photography, it works to tell uh, unexpected stories and create emotions by omitting users. If you are not creating city visualizations for movies like A Quiet Earth or 28 Days Later or I Am Legend, uh, you would need you, you you would not reach anyone with these photos as uh, computer animated visualizations. In this case, using a very long focal length with the help of which you actually photograph birds, I took architectural patterns also early in the morning before the morning haze uh, gives way and uh, exhaust fumes and sunshine prevail. Um, that too, I don't mean the focal length, but rather the focus on the essential can be the story or carry the story. Uh, what I want to show you with these uh, varied themes is that every single piece of information you want your story to convey gives you guidelines in how to tell it. Whether it is the time of the year, the time of the day, the position of the sun, the sky, the clouds, the rain, the people, the birds, the trees, the exposure time, the focal length, the aperture, or even your own experience uh, that is to be conveyed. These are simply too many factors to shoot a photo or load a 3D model into the visualizer without thinking. First of all, concentrate fully on what the viewer of your work should see and thus feel, but above all, what he should take away for himself. The atmosphere. The architect has uh, has redesigned the um, facade of a school's gym and added a recessed canopy. It is winter. Blue hour has begun. The school is uh, deserted. The architect has thought about the lighting concept, the pastel blue and the sky. Uh, the pastel blue of the sky and the pastel orange of the lighting benefit from each other very well in complementary contrast. It is winter. There is a very dull, soft light that does not create much shadow. The last school bell has rung and the pupils are leaving the grounds. The mood fits the dreary atmosphere of this situation. It is summer, the sky is blue, a few small pretty clouds stand out in the sky, the sun beats down on the schoolyard and creates rich shadows. The children are dressed in colorful clothes and frolic with each other. The design is accepted by its users and is used extensively. The story, the emotions and the, the atmosphere should always be considered, considered collectively, otherwise one loses persuasive power. Please excuse my probably disturbing jump from schoolyard to a cemetery. I'm usually very good uh, at remembering the location and my on-location perception during post-production when working on color and white balance. Uh, I'm not usually usually the one who, with the colorfulness of our world, quickly opts to shoot in black and white. Here, uh, my family and I are standing at my grandmother's grave after a very emotional day. Uh, moreover, a cemetery that is blatantly different from cemeteries in the cult cultural space I grew up in. I felt empty and out of place. In retrospect, I had no sense of the correct editing and colors. I didn't hit my mood on the spot. Um, leaving out the colors made me feel like I had hit it right. 
yet I wasn't using it to describe the place. I was uh, using it to describe me. Of course, um, it is quite easy to evoke a certain emotion by omitting the colors in certain subjects. But if you look at this resting place of the dead from an architectural point of view in comparison to, for example, European cemetery culture, in reduction in the color scheme, mm, the reduction in the color scheme is very helpful in reducing the grid of graves and access routes to the essentials, namely the enormous architectural and emotional difference to what I know regarding a cemetery and uh, subconsciously expected because I have not thought about it. In a nutshell, it's again all about what you want to tell your viewers and what emotion you want to communicate. Let's go from the dead to the wine, the cellar of a winemaker. Attractive, spacious architecture, dimmed light, humidity in the room, in the air and in the airways. The vignette, unusual in architectural shots, um, is here a help to concentrate on the essential, the wine. The lipstick towns. A still sleeping metropolis, dawn, the obligatory birds. We've all put in the corner of pictures at the end of our visualization, visualization work in Photoshop. It's almost uh, romantic, this uh, accumulation of concrete. The lipstick towers. Evening twilight with smog. Made even harsher with the help of an HDR image almost uh, repulsive, this uh, accumulation of concrete. The Lipstick Towers, Disco Time. Even in 2010, we were already quite uh, sensitized to the excessive energy consumption of mankind. It's almost ridiculous, this accumulation of concrete. In Shanghai, I took a lot of pictures over a quite, over quite a long time. Um, many of my shots have been taken by many, many other photographers before. And this did not bother me because I was aware that as a photographer, I may have the need to photograph, uh, to photograph things that I have never seen before and may never see again in my not very big German city of 250,000 inhabitants. I have literally seen countless images of visualizations of skyscrapers. I have taken a lot of pictures of skyscrapers um, myself. I was out very early again and stood in front of the Shanghai skyline in Pudong and uh, could see in wonderful morning light how two of the tallest skyscrapers of this world standing next to each other became um, the toys of clouds. They passed between the buildings, they passed through the opening of the Shanghai World Financial Center. The sunlight shining from behind was reflected by the facade of the Jin Mao Tower so that the clouds, golden glow and made the silhouette of the tower recognizable and set off from the second building behind. I had never seen that before. Since then, I also understand why they are called Cloud scrapers, because in German the term skyscraper is cloud scraper. Cloud scraper is definitely the better term. The office Arif Architekten, Arif Architekten, excuse me, follows an interesting uh, philosophy in their visualization. Graphically, uh, an appealing composition is always strived for. The materiality is sufficient to leave enough room for the imagination of the viewer. And the human, animal and furniture elements are reduced to the bare minimum to keep the story simple and comprehensible. In the car, someone leaves the house. On foot, someone enters the house. In the second floor, a woman in a red dress sits alone at the table, possibly waiting for the person arriving. The plants on the upper terrace a terrace, imply a generous outdoor space. 
The cat in the lower right corner of the picture is probably a running gag of this company. You can find it more often in the visualizations. The planting on the left and right frames the building well. The sky is very bright and not distracting. distracting. The uh, exterior is wet and creates the feeling that you would rather be inside in this weather. In contrast, the rooms inside are illuminated in warm yellow are, and are inviting. The same perspective in bright weather. The scenario remains the same, but the upper outdoor area is used. The lights in the house are off and the concentration is on the shadow development by the warm sunlight. The car is still above, uh, about to leave uh, the underground parking garage, uh, so these uh, visualizations are to be understood as snapshots. A few people are still shown here behind the window panes, curtains and uh, reflections. And again the same game as in the previous example. Last, the front perspective after rainfall and in sunshine. The cat has changed the side, and from the right, a bicycle comes into the picture. I have not included the pictures of the interiors at this point. Um, these are three, respectively, six representations that describe the form, the curvature, the appearance, and the use of a building well and uh, charmingly. Position and alignment. While the story, the emotions and the atmosphere are mostly transported by what is obviously visible on pictures. The following two subject fields are stylistic means that facilitate or even make possible the above mentioned transport. In order to get a feeling for the position and the Orientation of a camera, or rather the sensor of a camera, one must keep the following in mind. Whether one is aligning one's camera in a room or in a 3D orbit, the X, Y and Z axis with the zero point in the center of the sensor. The zero point can be chosen as required and around all axes can be rotated. We will take a look at the four effects of this in a few examples. For such a central perspective, it is essential that the center of the sensor is exactly in front of the center of the facade in the vertical. The horizontal is freely adjustable, so that the image neither tilts nor perspectives taper around none of the three axes may be rotated. For the orbit, in the visualization this means sensor height is equal to Target height, sensor plane, is exactly parallel to the subject plane. Slight inaccuracies can be adjusted in the image processing software of your choice, but carelessness only to a certain degree and also only with loss of possibly important pixels at the edges of the image. Looking over a crowd of uh, people is not something I can do, because for all of us, most other people's heads are on a line namely our own horizon. If I want to look over the people so show, to show the staggering of the area, it is necessary to position my sensor higher. The perspective tapering of the building is created by my rotating horizontally around the y-axis. There is no rotation around the x-axis. This ensures that the vertical staccato of the facade is captured. Without a lofty starting point, the overview of the users who are uh, authoritative for the emotion and the architecture that is uh, authoritative for the users uh, would not be possible. Um, at Expo 2010, there was only one point from which the Polish and German pavilions kissed. Having found this point and aligned the zero point of my sensor with it, I was able to rotate the camera around the zero point as I wished, because this was not about actual clamping. Changing the focal length from this point would not have prevented the kiss, but moving backwards along the 
imaginary line from the kiss to the zero point of my sensor would have caused the pavilions to overlap and moving forward would have caused them to move away from each other. If the subject gives you all the freedom in terms of positioning and orientation of the sensor, you have to keep your eyes open and be quite attentive. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. The client asked me to take pictures of all his buildings. Some he wanted to advertise with my pictures for rent or sale. Some he just wanted to remember after he had uh, remodeled, add on to, or even demolished them. So we talked about an inventory. In this case, for this client speci uh, specifically, no story, no emotions, maybe a little atmosphere. Mm. Thus, the building here is not only the main actor, but moreover the sole actor in a tightly built commercial area. By choosing a favorable angle, the staggering, staggering of the two parts of the building opened up to me, along with the, with the intendation, intendation between uh, both of them. If I had set up the tripod half a meter further to the right, the tree jutting in on the left would have obscured the last edge of the building in perspective. Doesn't sound bad, but it would have been bad. From the farthest right window of the building opposite, I couldn't stretch the angle of the subject enough. This uh, perspective is not good. And standing even higher up, it also became too untidy for me. What I could hide in perspective behind the fence from below and now lay bare uh, in front of me. This perspective is uh, bad. Of course, the tables are neatly and accurately set before the shooting. Nevertheless, uh, such pictures, mainly in restaurants, create an overloaded information content. Uh, the image uh, would look even more cluttered if lines of the room in the horizontal and vertical were not also accurately aligned. This stairwell of an apartment building is very large and conically cut. Uh, if there are many lines in an image section, it is even more important to keep the alignment of the axis in order not to lose control over the weighting of the image. Of course, the camera can be also pointed up or down. However, the staircase here, which tapers downwards in perspective, along with all its lines and the banister and the tiles, must then be caught and balanced by the composition of the staircase in the picture. It has to look intentional. If you tilt the camera by two millimeters, you aim a few meters lower in the distance. What you get when the target height is not the same as the sensor height can be seen very clearly here. The buildings tilt outwards. But be careful, in this picture, there are three skyscrapers who lines, uh, whose lines are all absolutely parallel. Promise they, are, they all are. Uh, nevertheless, one feels that the outer buildings tilt outwards toward the top. This has the following simple reason. The camera is at street level and is uh, aimed straight up. Skyscrapers have a habit of getting smaller as you look up. Skyscrapers, uh, several of them in a field of view, tilt towards each other as you look up. Perspective tapering. In real life, we don't perceive perspective taper too strongly. Our brain recalculates it to a certain degree. If we now look at a very tall object in a photo, our brain wants to do us the same favor and equalizes the objects outward a little. This a little was enough to make the buildings tilt again, this time to the outside. If you take a photo with the camera, you will not encounter this effect because you take a photo what, uh, of what your brain has already corrected. But if you then go into image processing and straighten the lines, absolutely, you will notice this effect. And this effect is encountered again and again when looking at architectural magazines and newsletters. Composition. Before I confront you with numbers and formulas of the golden ratio, the Fibonacci golden spiral, and 
and golden triangles. I keep it simple. Here, there is a vertical center of the picture. The alignment according to the center of the picture may often appear to be rather boring in a photographic re representation. Uh, personally, I consider the absolutely symmetrical alignment of an absolutely symmetrical structure in a naturally grown environment as quite advantageous. The two handrails mark the left and the right thirds, vertical thirds. So the perspective end of the bridge in the depth of the picture marks the lower horizontal third. The tension cables mark about the horizontal uh, sixth, half of a third. A third is mathematically quite close to the golden ratio. If one sets imaging axis to horizontal and vertical thirds, one composes a harmonious and balanced image for the eye and the brain. The pylon marks the left vertical third, the top of the pylon, the upper horizontal sixth. The blurry tree in the foreground, the vertical third, the right one. The blurry tree in the foreground, the lower horizontal third. It is also the image forming trees in the foreground that provide the view of the bridge. The tension cables from diagonals in the field of view, one and two. This software does not allow me to simply lay out the lines by thirds, fourths, and uh, sixths. So I hope you won't be unhappy if I lay them out uh, freehand. Uh, you will certainly not miss the references I want to make between the subject and the lines and the intersections. In this picture, you can also continue the game with the lines and continue and continue and continue. Horizontal, upper third, the superstructure. Middle third, the substructure. Lower third, the direction of movement and reading. Vertical, approximately access to the building and approximately bend of the upper volume. In the corner, a little sky, a little green, a person and another person. If one places individual components of the picture on the intersection of the third lines, one places them harmoniously in the picture. The attentive viewer has surely already noticed that besides the readability of the composition horizontally and vertically, there is the other level, the one in the depth. After all, there is usually a background and even a foreground next to the subject. The lower horizontal line marks the transition from the foreground with people to the main subject in the golden ratio. Approximately, it is uh, one third foreground and two thirds pavilion. The upper horizontal line marks the transition from the unbuilt, the sky, to the built up, the pavilion in the golden ratio. The two vertical lines show that the main subject is in the center of the picture, leaving the same distance to the edge of the picture on the left and right. Now, let's look at the main subject. Horizontal, lower edge and upper edge, as well as the relative center on which the dark line in the blades appears. Vertical, left outer edge, after two thirds follows the round bend in the perspective, right back edge, and the center again represents the dark line which is visible in the blades. This is also the absolute center of this photo. You should also not always feel obliged to proceed according to numbers or according to grids that the viewfinder of your own camera gives you. You can uh, rely on your good trainable feeling for visually pleasing, pleasing uh, proportions and uh, ratios. So same, same, airspace, concrete, airspace, concrete, airspace, concrete, and airspace. Why do not do it Excuse me. 
Why not do it that way if it fits and feels good? Works. Or simply use the window that the architect has decided on as a pictorial grid. The customer was very proud of his crane. I simply drew a diagonal here and set a small highlight with a flying uh, prefabricated element. I wasn't looking for a golden Fibonacci spiral at this point. It is simply a beautiful spiral staircase. That's where it comes from. If you take care that the lines um, find a hold in the corners and the railing gets a reference to the center of the picture, you also get a compositionally tidy picture. Admittedly, staircases are very difficult, especially the round ones. This picture went viral because someone discovered the golden Fibonacci spiral in it. When photographing, do not look for the Fibonacci golden spiral. The golden Fibonacci spiral finds you in retrospect when you look at it. What will help you when photographing or visualizing is neither a folding rule nor templates. Trust in your own good feeling for harmonious proportions. Observe a few rules and your attention are enough. Always paying attention to this, you can confidently put composition dogmatism aside. Luxigon visualizes here a concert hall in Munich for Barozzi Vega. A simple and understandable story of arrival, an elegant evening, a breathtaking atmosphere through the play of the light with the materiality, an elevated viewpoint for a good overview, a very beautiful and balanced graphic layout. Again, Luxigon visualizes a tower in Sydney for Henning Larsen, spacious access and lounge areas with the interplay of daylight and artificial light. The viewpoint not only allows one the perceive, to perceive the space to the left and right, but also up and down. In spite of many aligned lines, the picture is given stability through the relationship of the lines to the corners and centers of the picture. Luxigon visualizes the Komische Oper in Berlin for Rex. The building sits on the left side and opens up to the right. In addition, Life on the street takes place in the extension of the airspace of the entrance situation. In this case, uh, for X, the Ronald O. Perelman performing art center in New York, um, the atmosphere is quite well done. But just as there is a lot happening on the right half of the picture with the glowing building and the people with umbrellas, the left half of the picture has nothing to provide a counterpoint. Uh, the picture seems unbalanced. An umbrella carrying couple in the foreground of the left half might already have helped. Romain Jouet visualizes, visualizes here a kitchen for cuisine. Hugo Martin. Uh, I found this image in the in the Inkscape official community group on Facebook. The a precisely chosen um, positioning of the kitchen block and the staccato of the facade development give the image an enormous stability, despite the strong diagonality of the background. Great attention was paid uh, to the lines here. This can be seen especially in the alignment of the cooker top, which leads an extension to the tiles of the wall behind it. On the ceiling, as a counterpoint to the floor, the um, three luminaires are perceived as somewhat uh, irritating perhaps they could have been hanging models i don't know this picture uh, is a, a real feast for the eyes i like it very much wonk wonk swong hope uh, pronounce it correctly shows this image in the inscape official community group on facebook too what a very well done picture uh, i like to imagine myself sitting back on the sofa reading something and enjoying the start of the day. Um, there is still a notepad, pen and water on the table. It's a pity that uh, the protagonist has just got up and walked out of the picture. Put him back, please. 
I know it's getting to be a lot. One more topic and I let you go. The motive is irrelevant. Now, visualizations of large urban gestures or impressive buildings are not constantly conceptualized and created. Often cheaply produced profitable buildings have to be visualized in order to advertise them to investors or buyers. Uh, if people are in the picture, I usually set the camera height to eye level if the situation does not uh, require otherwise. For empty rooms, I like to choose the middle room height so that the perspective tapers appear tidy. The distance of the room edges to the ceiling and the floor are the same in each case. I apply the rule of thirds here as well, of course. By the position of my tripod, I show references between open rooms areas, of course, although it is quite difficult to photograph against the light and still accurately reproduce interior and exterior spaces, tenants like to see rooms with many windows and fluted with light. If I were to break the image down into thirds and fourths now, more references would come clear. Uh, to achieve these references when composing, it is of course necessary that I always check my point of view, my height and my alignment. When it comes to positioning, alignment and composition, a car is nothing more than an object. By stretching it at an angle, it becomes possible to show two attractive sides of the object. By adjusting the point of view guide in the alignment, you find the right composition. Certain stylistic devices that serve the atmosphere are not necessarily transferable to other disciplines of photography, at least not unconditionally. The, this lens flare does not make now a great desire for commercial buildings with thermal insulation composite system. But the client said, oh, that's beautiful. Even though the stylistic device, as well as uh, that of the vignette, for example, are very untypical for architectural shots, this does not mean that you should not use them if they can help you. Foreground and thirds, subject and thirds, background and opposite thirds, easy one. Finally, let's look at the image rules applied to a completely different subject. Taking pictures during an event is completely detached from what can be planned. You have to be very attentive, but at the same time, you have to be very lucky. The windows are behind the posters, so unfortunately, only the yellowish artificial light illuminates the scenery from above. Light from above, unfortunately, always falls on the upper edge of the eye sockets, that's, uh, that is the, the eyebrows, and casts unslightly shadows in the eye sockets, which uh, can make the model look tired and exhausted. But let's look at the aspects that could be influenced vertical. The two, the left two thirds show Marcel. He is sitting exactly in the left third. Marcel is teaching. His arms he holds relatively centered in the picture, absolutely parallel. They are the only diagonals uh, in the picture and thus have our attention. On one of his arms, he has a tattoo which characterizes him and his teaching. With one hand, he holds the right third. In it, we read what Marcel is teaching. Horizontal. On the upper third line are Marcel's eyes looking into the camera. On the same line are the three relevant terms he is talking about. In the lower third is the edge of the image to the blurred foreground, the audience. Two out-of-focus backheads symmetrically frame uh, the scene. There is eye contact between them and Marcel. In the background, we see a lettering exactly symmetrically over Marcel's head. His, uh, this name is Marcel's company, in whose name he is teaching. A completely different subject, but exactly the same approach. Only other aspects are important because the subject is not a house or a car. Lines of sight become relevant where before it was the material or a window. 
first always ask yourself what you want to tell. Next, next ask yourself for whom you want to tell it. To the boss, to the customer, to the tenant, to the jury, to the broker, to the investor, to the buyer. Once you've figured that out, you know how to tell it, to convey the emotion you intend to convey. Dear participants, that was my content for the first part, the eye of the photographer. I hope that I've been able to arouse um, your interest at one point or another and that I have been able to give you something to take away with you, which you will remember and enjoy in your, ex in your next uh, visualization work. If so, then just join us for the next three parts. I would like to show you briefly below the topics we will be covering. The photographer's camera and lenses, technically created stylistic elements. So the focal length, the aperture, the shutter speed, ISO, and the dependence of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Opponents and allies. Opponents can be allies. The light, the most important. Against all trades, can you fix it in Photoshop? Architectural digest, may I move your furniture away for the photos? And the post-production, bring things to the point. And last but not least, an landscape case study. Stay excited. If you have any questions about the contents of this first part, please send me an email to the address shown, question at gfnderescu.de. I would answer all questions that I receive up to and including 26th of January at the beginning of the next session. I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much for your time and see you soon.